you know, it's just a perfectly designed bag. It is, it's, it's clean, it's no nonsense, it's incredibly well made, and um, it's not all, all zips and pockets. A modern remake of a British classic. The leather satchel was once an essential for school kids of the 70s. Today, it's a trendy retro icon. All thanks to a $1,000 investment from a mom trying to help out her daughter. She was having a tough time in school, being bullied over just stupid, stupid, stupid stuff. So I said, I, I will put you in the best school ever and you will never come back to this school. And it was the end of the summer term. And so that sort of set me with, with quite a, a challenge because in Cambridge we are blessed with quite a few fantastic schools. Um, but quite a few of those fantastic schools um, come with, with school fees attached. So she started from scratch, choosing to make satchels from a list of money-making ideas. I remember in the very beginning sort of just feeling so thrilled to bits. And I remember just the, the thrill of that first order from someone that you don't know. To think that less than two years from that, we were the big hit of New York Fashion Week in September of 2010 with the fluorescent satchels. A year from that, um, being asked by, by Google to be the face of Google Chrome. In this country, that Google advert went everywhere. My husband and I went to cinema and when you see an advert come up in the cinema, and you are literally bigger than life size. <laughs> Fashion bloggers loved it, and that fueled sales. I really, really love the color of this bag. I thought that this would be a great accessory to have, and I think it's such a classic shape. It's just very kind of preppy, and it goes along with my style. My first famous person uh, was Sophie Ellis Baxter. On the homemade website, I saw the name appear in the customer list. Alexa Chung was uh, a real high point. And then Brad Gretzky and, and the, the cast of Mad Men, it was a, a end of filming gift for, for them. Online orders from a hundred countries led Julie to setting up shop in Covent Garden and now Cambridge. Now with a trusted investor, her eye is on China and the States. The $21 million for minority stake. Mm with Index Ventures, who were behind Skype, um, behind Netta Porter, Nasty Girl in the States, and ASOS, um, and people that I really, really love working with. And so it, it, it took a while, two years, um, but they stuck with it and until I was absolutely convinced that, that they could grow the brand without losing the heart of the brand. And that's the one thing that I couldn't sell. Also close to her heart, her family, her staff, and Rupert the dog. That's 120 people you've employed. That's um, 120 mortgages every month. So I don't take that lightly at all. And I think that um, I'm incredibly proud of getting my children into the school that I wanted, because that's what my mum and I set out to do. I'm enormously proud that my mum has somewhere to come every day and contribute and not feel like uh, she's been sidelined just because she's more than 70. And um, she loves it and it's given her a real interest. And she always says that, um, she says, I, I always thought that maybe I'd have a career. It just came a bit later than <laughs> I imagined that it, it would come. An open and shut case goes to prove to bag a great idea in a recession, the simplest ones are the best.